Hey guys, we are here in Barcelona with my really good friend uh, Rob and also one of the best affiliates that we have on our platform. Rob has been doing media buying for some years now, but I'm going to let him tell us uh, a little bit about himself and about his history and the um, space that we're working on and in performance marketing overall. Rob, thank you for coming. Please tell us a little bit uh, about your history and about your experience with media buying. Well, Andre, thanks very much for having a super awesome inv invitation this week. And uh, I'm having a great time here anyway, so it's been awesome. And also lovely lovely to finally meet you in person. <laughs> you know, we do do everything over Zoom. It's long overdue, definitely. L long overdue, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so I've been uh, uh, in media buying since 2019 and done pretty good from from day one so just before covid right yeah just before covid the perfect timing <laughs> 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 and uh yeah um i was originally on a different platform before uh lion publishing introduced me to yourself and i owe them a big thank you because my conversion rates went out of the window and both... skyrocketed <laughs> so uh, to hear that, man. moving over to buy goods was an absolutely amazing decision for me and uh, thanks to a couple of people i met you and you know i'm um, focused on doing those sort of things since then but my original background is electronics engineering and i have a separate company that specializes in super yacht communications where i design and build communications for massive yachts around the world um, and it's a sort of a, a strange transition going from, you know, electronics engineering into, into media buying, but I actually quite enjoy the analytical side of it and making, making the best of the numbers. That's why you're so good at it because you, your brain works like a, a <laughs> bit differently than, uh, than the creative guy. That's why you always look at the numbers, your testing, your split testing. Yeah. I mean, I think the secret to media buying is actually split testing and testing the numbers, working with people like yourself that are receptive to ideas. I think in other networks, they're not receptive to ideas and they're not willing to work with partners and affiliates to improve the conversion rates and to give everybody an, a happy experience on the platform. Because a lot of people leave affiliate marketing with a negative attitude about it and don't make progress because they're not given the support. And you know your team and the people around you have given us some great support some awesome companies involved, you know, the vendors involved have given us the opportunity to grow like we have grown. So focusing attention on numbers, things like that, has been very important to my growth as well as my friends that are involved in the business as well and their growth. So I would say, you know, happily we made the right decision when I first met you to run traffic, <laughs> to test traffic. Thank you for that. <laughs> the thing is that I'm actually an engineer too in my core and I was struggling with making the reports and everything else a bit more clear and a bit more easier to read for uh, people that are not actually looking at this the way we're looking at this. Yeah. So um, I actually listened to a bunch of advices from you guys and from, from you and not just you, other guys too. And that's why we were able to um, tweak it and we still continue on changing it and just making it uh, better, I hope, based on the advices that we're getting. Because otherwise, I mean, I don't know how an affiliate thinks, right? So. <laughs> well, differently, all the time. <laughs> have to test all the time. Yeah, I think the secret to success is actually working with yourself and your team because we've been able to test some amazing offers we get to test them before everybody else does, not because it's preferential, but because we're putting the effort in to get those tests. And I think if you put the effort in and your numbers show that you're putting the effort in, we get to test those offers and we get to tweak those offers. And it, it, obviously it helps your other affiliates. You know, they know what's working, what's not working. Well, definitely. But I think the important thing to note is that going from one particular network to buy goods, for example, was almost a 1% increase in conversion rate. So that it was a no-brainer when I switched over. I saw a massive change. That's huge, man. I remember you were actually one of the first guys that tested this for me. And oh, by the way, thank you for that. It helped me um, figure out that um, the things, the exact things we needed to tweak to get to the conversion rate that we're having today. So yeah, 
yeah, I, I owe you uh, a great deal. So thank you. Well, it's, you know, it's, I think I call it a team effort. It's not down to just me. It's about understanding those numbers and then telling you what those numbers are and we can tweak those numbers. And what they mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is that? Oh, yeah, it's that. <laughs> but um, you run mostly on social, right? So yeah, social. So I run mostly on Facebook and YouTube, primarily YouTube. So I do a lot of, a lot of work around YouTube. I think the return on investment on YouTube is massive compared to Facebook. But that's my own opinion. That's not everybody's opinion. Um, I'm pretty comfortable running traffic there. I've spent a lot of time inside YouTube understanding. I've got a really good relationship with YouTube. Um, and I think that comes from, well, it's actually Google. It comes from having previous experience in that and also building building and testing inside Google ads is actually quite powerful. They've got a, a, a more advanced, more mature algorithm that can give us the figures that we want. You know, we on some days when you're looking at your EPCs, you go, wow. You know, Speaking of EPCs, give us like what's a really good EPC on, on Facebook and what's a really good EPC on, on Google? I think depending on the offer. So if we go for the sort of the non-weight loss type offers, you know, if you're looking at those other offers, we're looking at probably on Facebook about a $2, one, $1.50 EPC, $2. The conversion rate roughly 1.9 to 2% conversion rate on that on, on, on your platform. And then on YouTube... It, it's double that easily. So the conversion rate on there is anything from 4% to 6%, which I've been seeing. Yeah, but uh, YouTube is also more expensive than Facebook. It's expensive if you're looking at cost per click, which you should never do. You don't look at cost per click. You look at the cost per acquisition because as the algorithm matures, you start getting sales with well within your CPA target, well within, which means you're going you're gonna to make more profit. So even if on one day you're having a $5 cost per click, for example, that same day, you could be getting sales at $30 a sale easily. And that's oh, so you still you would still be in the green. Yeah, you'd be way in the green, especially with our CPAs. We were well in the green then. So the the difference between Facebook's uh, cost per click and Google's cost per click is massive, obviously, you know, Facebook's traffic is pretty cheap, uh, comparatively. However, I would say that the conversion rate is like 10 times better on Google than it is on Facebook. And you can see that in the ROI. Okay, so what are the base, like the, the metrics that you follow to be able to run a, a successful campaign? I mean, on for Google ads, for YouTube ads, I would say I look at a number of things to make that decision. So I first of all look at um, the initial test, which tells me I'm gonna get at least some checkouts on a hundred clicks, for example. And if I'm getting some checkouts and my video performance is well within the KPIs that I've set myself, depending on the target, for instance, it could be a mobile platform that I'm targeting this week or a television using QR codes, et cetera, or, you know, desktop uh, environments. I never run the three together. I normally mix and match. That's what I like to do. But it depends. You know, the, the power comes from... Um, how you plan your how you plan your your campaign it depends on how you plan your campaign and what type what type of offer you're running okay and so are you planning it based on certain metrics or do you have like a, a default setup that you keep on using it i have a default setup that kicks it off uh which i follow so it's not a it's not this is not a secret so the the default setup is not a secret you know i think 90% of people do it this you know you have one campaign one ad group and you have two ads and in those two ads you have slight differences that gives yourself a little bit of an advantage on the test especially in the test phase and then after that we start looking at the performance of the video you know what the view rate is what the click through rate is i i i personally ignore the cpc at this stage i ignore that i focus more on what i'm getting from the actual metrics, you know, across the view rate and the click-through rate down to the lander. If I'm having issues on the lander, it's pretty straightforward. You know, if it's under 50%, I've got to tweak my lander. And that's what I do. Oh, so when you say your lander, you mean your pre-lander? Like the pre-lander, the, the bridge the, page. The bridge page. So okay. everybody uses different terminology, I understand <laughs> it. But the, the pre-lander, if you like, is uh, key to getting that click over to the VSL on... And after that, we've got to look at the conversion rates. So the more people we get to the VSL, the better chance we're going to have on getting those conversion rates up. 
that, and that also comes down to the offer, obviously. So, you know, my advice to anybody who's getting into this is to split test, split test offers, split test your videos, split test your ad copy, spend time understanding what ad copy actually is rather than copy paste and then hope it's going to work. And, you know, so. <laughs> okay. Speaking of that, because <laughs> I've actually had um, a few discussions about the copycats and whatnot. So are things getting a bit more difficult nowadays? Because I know we never really worried about guys that are copying uh, other guys' ads before. But uh, in the last couple of months, everyone was like, mm, maybe yeah. we should do something about those guys because uh, it's killing it for us. Yes, yeah. I agree, Andre. I totally agree that you need to do something about it. There's a, there's a number of reasons why people are actually complaining now. And that's because the propensity to get your adverts onto YouTube, for example, is a lot harder than it was three months ago. There's been a lot of changes on the platform. People are, you know, people that are looking at this uh, podcast are going to go, oh, I know what you're talking about. And there's been a massive algorithm change. There's also been policy changes. They now have AI reviewing ads, which they didn't have before. So an AI would come in, review your ads, and determine whether your content is suitable for YouTube or the Google Display Network. And that has had a massive impact on ROI. So if you don't know how to fix that, then you know, you, you're going to have to do your homework. I've already figured that out, but you need to know how to fix that. Uh, and that's why people are complaining. They're complaining because there's a lot less out there in terms of people getting adverts approved. And because their ads are already approved, they're starting to see all the copycat stuff come through. And that is what's causing problems. You know, I mean, the platform is massive. Google's a massive platform. It's, you know, so I don't really believe that we've got too much competition out there. But because the algorithm is so clever, especially the video algorithm on, on uh, YouTube, um, it picks up that people have started stealing scripts. And, uh, you know, plagiarism isn't really a good place to be. But why does it stop working for the guy that created the original because video? Too? Everyone, like, this is what I don't Well, mean. because the algorithm is now seeing exactly the same thing. So therefore, it's not new content. Um, so when you have new content, you're going you're gonna to have great results. And if you have the same content, maybe a slightly different hook or something like that, it's not going to have great results. You've got to have original content. And also, if you're writing your ad copy using the old school method, you know, keep doing that. Keep doing that if you're doing that. Don't what about that. if you write the copy using AI? If you write copy using AI, you've got to write, use the right tools. You know, we, we're in discussions about using the right tools at the moment. We oh, won't yeah. go into that today. <laughs> but it's, as that's, you know, it's fantastic tools. That's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the truth of the matter is a lot of people um, don't know how to use AR properly to write their ad copy because they don't have ad copy training. So my advice is even if you want to have a small chance in making money, you need to just go and do a little bit of reading, a Kindle book, you know, get going on ad copy. There's loads of lovely books out there on writing ad copy. Get into it. Start writing your ad copy. Understanding what ad copy is about. Understanding, you know, how to speak to your audience to begin with. If you want to differentiate yourself from being a copycat to somebody who knows how to make money doing ad copy, then you're well on your way. That's true. And it's, it's really confusing to me because uh, in the past, we have had several affiliates that have been copying other affiliates and no one really cared about it. So the fact that we are actually here and we're talking about it now, it means that things have changed a lot. Yeah, I agree. Things have changed a lot. Um, let's, let's, let's back up into the other traffic source, for example, Facebook. That's where you see a lot of plagiarism. Oh, yeah. And... Because the spa tools are out there, they can find all these ads now a lot quicker than they used to be able to do. These things are becoming more apparent. For instance, somebody's worked really hard on making a particular image or a particular video for Facebook, and it really resonates with a particular audience, and they've done really well with it, and they've tweaked it here and there, and then suddenly that image is copied, and it's on 500 different affiliates that we've never heard of before that probably run like a hundred bucks worth of traffic or something like that. No disrespect to anybody about how much money you want to spend on ads. But the truth of the fact is, if you're making this a business, you'll understand a dollar is a dollar spent. And you've got to, it's the money that you've earned and you've got to look after that money. And if you, if you find that your content has been copied, 
you need to reach out to Andre. Bottom line, reach out to Andre and say it's been copied, and I'd like to get on with it. You know. Yeah, we're we're actually trying our best to um, stop the guys that are copying ads, but it's an ongoing battle. So yeah, guys, stealing is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but let's uh, let's get back to um, my um, original question. So the way you structure your campaign. So you're seeing uh, you, you have the right pre-lander, you have the right ad, you have the right everything, right? So how do you decide when it's time to increase the budget or how do you decide it's time to scale the campaign? Okay, well, we're quite lucky with the Google infrastructure. It's uh, slightly different on Facebook where it takes a little bit longer to get to the stage. But on the Google infrastructure, you can make that decision within, you know, the first thousand dollar spend, for example, you know, during testing. Because this, for example, you've got a brand new pixel, conversion pixel, and we want to test an offer. We'd, I wouldn't say spend a thousand dollars, but I'm just uh, using this as an example. But I would see I would see a profit in that thousand dollar spend anyway. I would see a profit and then I start scaling. And I scale based on okay. And the, what's the the profit margin need to be like? How how much does it need to be for you to to feel comfortable? I th I think anything over thirty percent allows me to scale, because it's very consistent. On, on so Google. you're saying that Google still has consistency. It has consistency. Yes, it does, for me it certainly does. And when I see the consistency, that's when I scale. And it's not like Facebook where you can only scale. You know very slowly you know otherwise it messes up the algorithm with google it's like yes spend your money we'll get you those sales and it does that's why i say i never look at cpc i look at cpa how much did it cost me to get that sale is it well within my parameters of making a profit of 30 percent and above you know and i'm talking on cpa i'm not talking rev share here if i talk rev share it's slightly different i need to push the margins up to you know 40 45 percent and then you can scale but on CPA, you can scale at 30%. There's no refunds and you can scale. And that's anybody starting out should look at, you know, starting with CPA just to understand how things work. If you're on Google and you really want to get that pixel to optimize, get it to optimize on a CPA type uh, How many sales does a Google pixel need before? It's around about 50, but it's, uh, you know, so sometimes like it only Facebook? takes 10. You know? Really? Yeah. I know you have to have like 50 sales on Facebook for, for the pixel to... Well... My advice to anybody, okay, is, you know, n nobody's a guru. Absolutely nobody's a guru. You've got to do this work yourself. You've got to understand it because everybody's ad account is slightly different. However, the documentation on Google versus Facebook is hands down the best on, on Google. It tells you exactly how the algorithm is going to work. So okay, but do you trust go, them? I, I trust them <laughs> because it's worked for me, you know, so read. <laughs> And I think, I think everybody just wants to get on and run an ad and see how it does. It's like, yeah, that's a good way because that's how you're going to learn. But if you really want to differentiate yourself, you need to read the documentation. You need to understand what a TCPA campaign is about, how the bidding strategy works, you know, how the auction works, where you are in the bidding cycle. If you can understand that and you can see that in your tracking data, then you can make those decisions. Google's platform is powerful itself in the dashboard and there's loads of metrics people never look at. They just don't take the time. It's like, oh, this, and then a lot of people only look at three, maybe four KPIs and go, oh, I'll make a decision on that. But it's actually a lot more than that. There's a lot more things going on. That, and, and if you just take, just take the week, you know, during the week when you're doing nothing and you've made the ads and what have you, take the time to read, read the documentation, understand the platform. You know, go to the, go to the Google community because there's loads of things going on there that people don't know about. There's obviously people spending millions of dollars a day that are going into the community and saying, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm finding. You know, the, the secret to anything really is putting the effort in. You know, no plan works without you doing the work. I still need some people to help you. I mean, let's say, for example, when the account just won't spend. Like, what yeah, do you do I mean, that? obviously, if an account is, well, the latest thing that people might be experiencing is that a Google ad account is not spending. And there's clever ways around that to get your ad to spend. Obviously, we don't want your traffic to fall on unless your offer's uh, designed around it, which is why we work together. I'll tell you, like, okay, we're seeing a lot of traffic fall on Google Display Network, and this particular offer doesn't do well, or this particular lander doesn't do well on, on Google Display. Let's optimize this particular offer for a native-style offer, and I think you'll see better conversion rates for your affiliates then. You know, this is what's happening, and you've got to you've got to be on the 
You've got to be on the go the whole time. That's why you test. That's why you split test. Oh, my God, Rob. You're like a machine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth, though. So if, you, if anybody is struggling right now, as you say, you know, with some accounts are just not spending, there's two things to look at, really. So you start with the basics. Is my account under review? So in Google, it's a very simple process. You go to tools and settings. You go down to policy manager. You click on the policy manager. If you suddenly got like loads of disapprovals, go and take care of those disapprovals. A lot of people say, oh, it makes no difference. The truth of the matter is, if they go and read the documentation, it tells you that they put your account on ice if you've had loads of disapprovals. Okay, it's three strikes and you're out. Okay, and disapprovals, where do they come from? Like, are they coming so from Google mostly AI, or? AI disapprovals, okay. um, and then you've got to go and contest them. You either edit the ad straight away, don't leave it sitting there in your ad accounts, even though, even though the campaign might be turned off, go and edit that ad or remove it. You know, get it out of disapproval state. Even if it goes into policy limited or eligible, that's fine, but don't have it in disapproval state. It's a negative mark against your account. They do that, if you read the Google Ads Transparency documentation, it tells you straight away that they are doing this to keep ads clean on their platform. They want a good user experience. And when you have loads of disapprovals, it just means that going forward, it's going to take a lot longer for your ads to be approved, and you are going to be closely followed. And this is the truth of the matter. So take the time to read the documentation. <laughs> So there's no shortcut? <laughs> no, there's no shortcut. I mean, obviously, we would love shortcuts, but uh, the truth is take care of it straight away. Get on with testing. Next ad, get the next ad in. That's option number one. Option number two, if there's still no ad spend, um, obviously, the past uh, month or so, there's been a huge change on the Google platform, and you're starting to see traffic move in the direction of Google Display Network deliberately, and they do this for offers that they think are not high-quality offers, which means that all these copycat ads that are falling onto Google Display Network is the reason. So the reason why that's happening is they haven't got the quality ads, they haven't made quality uh, video roles or anything like it to fall onto the YouTube asset. So we have three assets, now it's down to two inside, if you're doing a, a TCPA campaign, which is the, uh, the, the YouTube platform, obviously Google Display Network, which is massive. And a lot of people say, oh, Robert, we've got exclusion lists. You know, we can use exclusion lists. You can. You can use exclusion lists. Uh, unfortunately, the traditional exclusion lists are negated now because of the quality of your content. So the old... Okay, and when you say the quality of your content, does that mean, like, are you referring to the copy itself, like the copy you use the for copy the video? The copy itself, because everybody's using very similar copy, you know. They're not, they're not experimenting with new hooks. They're not experimenting with the old-style you know, direct response marketing hooks that still actually work. They're not doing that, you see. They, they're going with the traditional, you know, basic hooks. They're using AI type uh, hooks that somebody has like put together, but they haven't actually tested this in real ad copy infra you know, infrastructure or environments. So I would say you need to go and do a little bit of homework. Uh, it's very difficult for a, a, uh, an affiliate today that's just getting into the market to understand all of this. So my advice is, you know, don't do YouTube videos then in the beginning. You know, start start with something like understanding what affiliate marketing is first, which you guys do with your, your young affiliates and your new affiliates. And they should reach out to people like yourself to say, right, where do we start? What What's the best platform to start on? And then move over to a more mature system, which, you know, obviously YouTube and Google are, are you know, it's a, it, it's, it can be an expensive platform. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. And I think, I think people need to understand that when you move over to that platform, you need to have some experience of what it costs to run an advert and what it, what it takes to get a sale at profit. Because that's what you're looking at. You're looking at bottom line sales and what my cost per acquisition was and am I in profit. But would they be, would anyone even be able to go to YouTube and just start an account and start promoting? Yes, anybody can do but that. Will their account spend or will it not spend because it's too new? No, the account, account that's will spend. Too. No, the account will spend day one. The account will spend. Um, unfortunately, for, and I don't want to get into too many semantics here because everybody's got a different opinion. I know exactly how long it takes for your ads to spend before they start seeing the traffic that you want to see. And it's, it's 
pretty much been proven time and time again by myself and other people I work with that it works exactly like that. Um, so when everybody says it's not working for me, it's they're not patient enough, you know, and po perhaps starting on the wrong particular way of starting an advert. So we, we normally say to people right at the beginning, you know, take Google's advice, even though a lot of people, oh, please don't say that, but take Google's advice for the, at least the first three days of your campaign. And then after that, it's back down to your training that we, we, wherever you've got your training from, a lot of people know what they're doing on the platform. They offer training, you know, go and speak to those people as well. They can help you. But in the beginning, if you don't have the money to afford that sort of training, then my advice is you start slowly. You've got to teach the algorithm how to find those conversions. And that is, here's the secret really, you know, about YouTube at Google advertising is target down, right down to the actual, actual person that you're trying to find. Get your audience sorted out on the early campaign to begin with. Because if you go super broad from day one, um, your ads will fall on channels that you're going, oh, that just makes no sense because it's still trying to understand who your audience is. It's trying to figure out so this where is a to send very traffic. different game comparing to Facebook. Because yes. on Facebook you would go as broad as possible and just let it. Yeah, I mean it's thing. pretty much the same game as Facebook. Okay, except it's going to cost you a lot more money because Facebook does paste paste budget spend. You know, Google doesn't do paste budget spend. If it finds that this particular video is resonating with a particular audience on a particular set of channels, it is going to drive your ad to those particular channels until it exhausts that. Oh, so you're saying it's going to spend all of your budget in a couple of hours? Yeah. Or like, oh, I so see. We, we try and encourage uh, new affiliates that have never done YouTube or Google advertising to, to take it easy because they can spend a lot of money without understanding the data. And they don't, and to spend money to get data, if you've got experience in affiliate marketing, if you don't have experience, you are going to need a helping hand to understand those metrics. And without that, I think people might be wasting a lot of money on YouTube. They, they need to understand what they're looking for. And obviously you guys publish a lot of data, um, but I'm not sure it falls on, on new affiliates ears. And perhaps that's something that needs to be looked at. I don't know. It's difficult for me because we all had to do this ourselves. Oh, yeah. You know? it's, uh... And they've got to do it themselves. But but, and, but think about the fact that it was a lot easier to do it a few years ago. Yeah, I mean, a few years ago, you would start a YouTube campaign. And because a lot of people hadn't seen these type of ads before, uh, the propensity to buy was very high. I mean, you look back at Metacore days and Exipure and Alpulene and... You know, you could turn on a campaign, you know, put all your money in there and walk away and catch a flight, come Printing back. Printing money, you're in, eh? <laughs> uh, you're in, your ROI is looking great, you know. Um, now it's a little bit harder. Obviously, there's a lot more copycats out there. And, and it's not really about copycatting as well. It's also about there's been a massive change on the platform. Okay, do they not like money? <laughs> well, the platform loves your money. It's going to spend your money. Um, but that's your job to go and fix that. And you've got to use the tools that they give you. So lots of things have changed for the better, I think. Um, and you've got to use those tools. So in our game, because it's pretty much, we can't really do brand advertising as an affiliate. You know, it's one of the no-nos. So you can't do brand advertising. But you can, if you're clever, you can use clever ad copy to get your point across. And you can come up with some good uh, strategies. You know, I'm working with a few people and giving them some strategies around this and how to get your videos to land on YouTube and not necessarily Google Display Network. So I know we've emphasized a lot of YouTube here because this is like obviously a very hot topic for people that are struggling at the moment. But also Facebook has been going through its own changes as well. Oh you know, so these platforms, they are, you know, because we don't do brand advertising, it doesn't know how to optimize for our sort of traffic. Hence why we have tracking involved we that's why as an affiliate marketer you need to understand the numbers whereas with bigger companies it's a brand and they just push their brand and people resonate to a brand and they've got multiple forms of advertising so with that in mind you know if you do, if we scoot back over to the google platform google has what they call performance max campaigns which takes that sort of approach and says right 
How are we going to take all your assets that you think you've got for this particular product that you're trying to sell? What's your return on investment or strategy? And you go, oh, well, I'd like 300%, okay? <laughs> and it's going to drain. If you put a $500 budget in there or whatever, or $100 budget, it's going to go and spend your money on the day and it's going to try and get you sale. And it does work. But again, it's the quality of the asset before it works. Okay. Um, okay, one more question about... This is a. It's going to be about Google and about Facebook too. So, what's your recommended daily budget when you're first starting a campaign on Google and then on Facebook? Well, with Facebook, you know, we've got a couple of different strategies. Everybody's got a strategy. Oh, yeah. you know. So, on Facebook, my strategy would be to uh, first of all get the best converting offer from your rep. <laughs> Make sure it's converting. Don't be a tester if you're brand new. Go and ask your rep. Um, then once you've got that, get your creative sorted out and then you start a campaign and the campaign should be down to, so if you want to teach, and this is for a brand new conversion pixel, you want to teach the pixel who the audience is, you get an audience, a hash list from your rep and you build an audience around the hash list. Do they list. still work, hash yeah, lists? they do. They work because at the moment we can still send traffic to a similar type of audience, okay? It's quite rare. Uh, that it, it converts like it used to, but it still works. And then you create a broad audience campaign at the same time. Small budgets, all of these are small budgets, so that you're teaching the pixel about the audience in, in your audience campaign. And then in your broad campaign, it's still got the same pixel. It's trying to find those customers. And you have a higher chance of getting the odd sale in the audience campaign. So I always say to people, you know, get a, a five ad structure going inside the uh, you know, I used to be a coach at uh, Robbie Blanchard's oh. Commission Hero, and that was a good strategy. It still works to this day. You know, um, if Robbie's ever going to watch this, I don't know, but he'll un he'll say yes. It's still a good strategy because it is. It's a good testing strategy. You have a broad campaign, and then you have an interest campaign. So three campaigns to start with. Three campaigns. Three campaigns. Yeah. So broad, broad interests, interest and, and audience. And audience. Okay, yeah. and each of them would have five ad sets. Five ad sets, and then. And probably two ads in them because you're going to split test your ads. You always got to split test. Find your winners. Oh, my God. <laughs> Find your winners. You don't know if it's a brand new pixel, if those images or those videos are going to work. And you don't know if your call to action is going to work or if the headline's working for you. You don't know that. So you've got to split test these. So a good start is to go for dynamic creatives. It gives you the opportunity to have multiple versions of ad copy and then images and things like that. So... In the beginning, you're trying to find your winner. As soon as you find your winner, that's when, you, that's when you, you're that's when you either going to, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm going to reach out to somebody who can help me or as soon as you find your winner, duplicate your winners and you know go and have some success is what I say. <laughs> okay, and how much uh, would you put on each each of the campaigns? I'd say you need to start at $125. $125 each? Yeah, so that's you know, $375 sure. okay. starting. Daily. Because, this yeah, daily, is daily yeah. spend. So in the beginning, it might not spend your entire budget, but it does. That's why we always say to people, when you publish a campaign, make sure you publish it for the start date that you want. So if it's tomorrow or the next day or whatever, make sure that you've got your publish date ready. Don't start it today if it's you've just had the ad approved at 10 o'clock in the evening and there's only a couple of hours left. It will expand your budget. It will spend your money. So you recommend people run all day long? In the beginning, I do. And then, of course, as their metrics start coming through, a tracking software is absolutely important, something that can upload the conversions with a good postback pixel. You guys have got fantastic uh, tools inside the BuyGoods platform, which I think people don't really know about, and I think you guys need to start telling them a bit more about it. There's power involved in the back end that they don't see, which helps you get those uh, conversions through a lot faster. I know other affiliates, top affiliates that you've been working with, I've got the strategy working, and I think that should work for a lot of people going forward. They need to know how to place those pixels and take advantage of that. I think you're the most data-driven person I know. Like, you're always, <laughs> Andre, give me, give me this, give me that. I'm like, no one has ever asked me about this particular metric. <laughs> Dude, I need data. I can't scale if I don't have data. <laughs> well, there's a reason, because it's the way you target your audience. So I look for, when I ask for a particular piece of data, it's because I've noticed an increase or a decrease or something like that in the particular audience I'm chasing down or a device or an operating system that I'm chasing down. So that's what I, that's why I ask for that data. And, and luckily, 
99% of the time, I don't have to ask too much because if I go into the back end, it's all there. All the operating systems are there. As long as your tracking is set up, tracking is key. It's like oh, yeah. key to success. And well, remember in the old days of affiliate marketing, nobody was running tra uh, tracking. They oh, just had no. very basic tracking. Oh, let's just run ads. Now you need to have tracking. Those were the days. Yeah. And obviously that's because people transitioned from being a hobby into a business. You know, so in the early days, for me, it was a hobby because I still and still do run my IT consultancy. However, the the future is there in media buying. And if you don't have tracking and you don't have good tracking software and you don't have great support in your tracking software company, you know, then you shouldn't be doing this. A bunch of the data and a bunch of the um, ways to set pixels were added on our platform based on recommendations from you and from other affiliates. Uh, honestly, when when you or other guys were asking about, hey, can I add my pixel here or can I add it there? I'm like, why would they even want to do that? <laughs> it made no sense for me. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm realizing that people are starting to get um, more and more granular with everything. Yeah, and well, let's face it, okay? As an affiliate marketing company and, you know, you, you work with vendors and affiliates, our, our type of offers... Um, don't have, or especially for us as affiliates, our conversion pixel and our conversions are only measured on a postback. So we don't have the true conversion live on our on our domain that we're advertising on. So the algorithms on both platforms, Facebook and Google, are designed to optimize on those domains, the domains that you are advertising on. Okay. So the only way we can do and have success is offline conversions. That's the only way. So hence why we ask you very particular questions about where we can place our pixel and how we want it placed because it helps us to optimize and to help the platform optimize for us. For example, uh, I don't want to mention product names, you know, from tracking software, but there's a particular piece of tracking software that's just been innovating all the time. Every five minutes there's something new coming out, which has helped us to optimize on, especially on Google, a lot faster than in the early days. Now we can have multiple conversion pixels on one campaign. Um, for example, I never run a campaign that, um, when I talk about a campaign, I might have like 50 or 100 campaigns in my big campaign. And inside that campaign is multiple conversion pixels that I'm optimizing on at different times of the day or particular device. This is for Google, right? This is for Google, yeah. You don't, you don't necessarily do that on Facebook. You could do, it probably would work, but it's not my main platform at the moment. My main platform is, is Google platform. Yeah, Facebook used to be your main yes, platform. Yes, Facebook though. used to, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I used to love it. Oh I still do. I still, like, I still like Facebook. There's nothing wrong with that traffic source. Um, it's just that my attention is more on Google now because a lot of changes have happened and I see the potential there. When they're saying a lot of changes have happened, do you mean a lot of changes have happened on Facebook which drove you to Google? Or are you saying that yeah. Google, Google is so... It's a bit of both, I think. You know, oh, okay. So, for example, you know, we had that whole... Oh, this is such an old news anyway. Everybody had this iOS issue. Um, but there was a clever way around it, which we came up with, and we all did well out of that. And then um, tracking platforms sort of caught up, and they did well for us on that. And then we saw some more changes where um, they were wiping out ad accounts, and we had to get clever... And you couldn't run every, you couldn't run all your traffic on your own ad accounts anymore. You had to scale up with a advertising agency with their ad accounts. Blah blah blah. You know everybody does this. So and it, newbies luckily have this opportunity today. Oh, it's so easy to get an agency yeah. account nowadays. Do you remember back in the day? Oh, I know. There's no I know way. This guy. It was like a secret. You know, <laughs> like scoring drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. But but now, but I also think there's a, a time and a place for people, and. In the um, Google space, having an agency account doesn't necessarily mean the same success as you have on Facebook. And the, the reason being is that Google's uh, policies are very, very different. And they have extremely good AR to find the same people. And your ads will be shut down, circumventing systems, et cetera, et cetera, if you haven't been clever about That's it. That's the, the baddest or the most horrible error and the yeah. most common one you're getting circumventing systems yeah, if you get that how why <laughs> yeah i mean if you get that and you generally haven't done anything 
okay, then you will get your ad account back. It's generally in the first week or two of advertising on the platform. It doesn't know anything about you. And and that's also because some people have been copycatting or grabbed somebody's lander, for instance, and they've forgotten to remove that person's tracking. And as soon as that happens, bash, circumventing systems. Because in their eyes, you are committing bid fraud. It's actually well documented. Again, please read mm. Google documentation. It actually tells you why you've circumvented systems. And it's not because you've gone and, oh, you know, I forgot to register my domain or it's nothing like that. You need to go and read the documentation. The key to getting your account back is in that Honest to God, Rob, I thought you were going to give us a shortcut or something. You just <laughs> go read, go study, go. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, we want the short answer. <laughs> oh, the short answer, right. You need to get yourself a good Google rep. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> so um, my other question was like, uh, so for Facebook, you said 375 would be a good starting point. A good starting point, so, yeah. What about for Google? Google, I would say roughly the same, like $250 roughly, um, especially in the first week, the seven-day learning period. Now, their seven-day learning period is genuinely seven days of learning. And my advice to anybody starting out on Google, on YouTube especially, is if you're doing a TCPA campaign, which is a conversion campaign, um, a sales conversion campaign, then you need to let the algorithm try and find you that audience, especially if you're going broad. But again, um, this is why we have ad groups inside, uh, you know, Google and Facebook and all these sort of things. But I don't recommend mixing and matching in the same campaign. You have different strategies. I just do not recommend that. So um, there's a couple of ways you could do this. If you want the pixel to learn and get your conversions, then yes, probably the best way is to still have a TCPA campaign. But um, a lot of people will struggle today because of the changes since uh, June on the platform where pretty much everybody's traffic will go to GDN if they don't make changes that are figured out and how to do these things. So your traffic will go to these. Google, in their own words, is saying, look, we're happy to send your traffic to GDN because we feel that we can give you a 20% uplift on conversions. I don't believe that's true unless you've got a seasoned pixel because imagine if you don't have 50 sales in the first seven days, it's not going to optimize for you anymore. You know, So the importance is finding a winner right at the start to try and get those sales. You need 50 sales for it to be perfectly in tune with you. When it gets to 50 sales, it does really exceptionally well. So a $375, $250 sort of starting budget is what I'd say. That's You literally have to look at that and say that my I've got $1,000, $1,500 to spend on testing. You've got to, you've got to look at it and that when, way. When they're saying testing, that means you're going to be in the red uh, during those oh, tests. Absolutely, right? you'll be in the red. And okay. depending on the offer, this, this oh, I'm not going to mention offers by names no, either, don't. but there are some good offers. Oh, we're talking but, about unicorns here. So, yeah, so there yeah, are, just... and there have been some unicorns that have done exceptionally well for everybody. And they do happen. And sometimes somebody gets really lucky. And, and our, my advice is when you get lucky, take advantage, advantage of, the, of the lucky streak. Make sure hey, you've got you, your tracking. Do you actually believe in the luck factor? I don't necessarily believe in that purely because I feel that there is a reason why the offer is doing well. It's because it's well-written copy, a, a good VSL. Somebody, somebody, the vendor, has taken a lot of time to fine-tune that funnel. When you find those vendors, spend as much time with them as you can. You want to be on their testing list <laughs> um, because those those people are few and far between. And luckily with Bargoods, you've got a lot of them on your platform, so we're quite lucky there. Um, uh, we're trying to work closely with them, um, with their offers and with the testing and whatnot. But uh, they, I have to give them all the credit for writing it and for putting it together because not many people can come up with uh, awesome offers. And we have had and we still have some vendors that keep doing it consistently. So. Yeah, like, like I say, we're very lucky with your platform. Very, very lucky. And again, I'm so glad that I met you because, you know, beforehand, you know, working at the other place, you know, it was like, you know, <laughs> let's go and have a look. Search down there, you know. The old trick was like, let's go to page four on the list and go, let's try that one. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, we're very lucky. Um, but, you know, a, a starting budget on a YouTube campaign is about that a day, especially if you go this particular route, which is a target uh, CPA campaign. And that is probably the one of the better um, 
performance optimizing strategies you can take on Google's platform. It's a really powerful strategy. Um, I wouldn't say that everybody will be successful in that because it depends on so many things. Um, how much effort you want to put into it, you know, all those sort of things. As we mentioned earlier, and I'll just go back to that very briefly. A couple of years ago, you could just turn on your ads and, you know, on a TCPA campaign and you'd be in profit. You know, obviously you make a loss if you weren't paying attention to the numbers, but generally you'd make money on the platform. And as time Why, has I mean gone, day one? Not necessarily day one, but sometimes you did. Again, unicorn offers. But if, you, if you've got like a very niched down offer um, that's really particularly like, let's, let's just use a, like a hearing offer. You know, it's not everybody has that particular issue. So it's not one in two people, sort of one in five. You've got to go find those five people to land your advert on them. So that's why I say you need to understand your target audience. And we lucky inside the Google platform, we have loads of opportunities to actually tap into those audiences day one. And I think people forget, especially the oldies that are on the platform, they forget there's some really nice tools on Google to allow you to go and do that still to this day. Um, but if you run a, if you're a newbie on the platform right now, you're going to be you're going to be looking at display network traffic primarily um, before your ads go onto YouTube platform. So if you read Google's documentation again, they done. And the reason why I'm saying this, I want to get this point across because people. If for the first three days of a campaign that's on Google, the first three days, it sends your traffic to app traffic and GDN, even if you've got even if you have the exclusion. On. Really? Yeah. So for the first three days, it's hands down that's where your traffic's going. Now it can be longer than that, depending on your budget. So if you've got a really low budget, it's going to be like four or five days of your traffic going in that direction. Okay. What about if I put, I don't know, let's say five k a day. So I put it all there, and will my testing phase be, be done? a lot quicker? Oh, so yeah, it so it's patience and money at yeah, the end of the money. day. It's not okay. Yeah, patience and money. I do not recommend you put five grand in day one because you know Google has a um, and it's a written statement saying in the learning phase it will spend easily two times your daily budget in a day. So if you put five k in, it can spend ten k. Oh. Yeah, it's documented. It's, it's not like a mystery. Oh, I spent 10K. How did that happen? It's actually, they tell you on a TCPA strategy, especially, they will spend two times your daily budget while they're looking for your audience. And everything is written down in the Google it's documentation? Not, everything I'm telling you is from that documentation. Everything. So I haven't made any of this up. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us, give like, us a summary. Let, let me get my made up notes. <laughs> Damn, they're not here. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob, I think you you told us a lot about um, Google and Facebook and actually some stuff that I had no idea about. So right now, I'm going to go and start studying <laughs> Google documentation because <laughs> you're not... <laughs> You're not giving me any shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the short the shortcuts we can have a discussion about that. You know, there's a few shortcuts. Oh, uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for a different day. Um, but yeah, it's been great to speak to you about these things because I I think it's very important that a message like this can get across to people that maybe are looking to get into this and they perhaps don't know what they're getting themselves into. And I'm not saying you mustn't take other people's training because I think you should. It, you should take as much training as you can get because educating yourself is actually the key to success. So it's not about, um, you know, not putting any work in. Educating yourself is the key to success. And then working with a partner like yourself, I think is also part of that success. Thank you so much for all the kind words you said about uh, me and about buy goods. And honestly, I, I feel that everything and all the tips and tricks and all the advices you gave me along the way have helped me a lot into building the um, uh, the tracking and also the uh, reports and analytics to where it is today so thank you for that and um, yeah thanks for <laughs> for give, for giving us the the hope that there might be a shortcut <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's there's definitely hope in the horizon i can see it and uh, a number of other people that I'm working with can see it. So there is hope on the horizon and, you know, don't give up. That's my word to everybody. So thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rob. <laughs> so, guys, there you have it. Stealing is wrong. <laughs> Google is hard. There's no shortcuts. <laughs> 
And thank you so much, Rob, for everything. And see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.